Hey YouTubers, I'm going to cut a gasket and I'm going to show you a safe way to cut a gasket with a razor knife and not in danger cutting yourself uh, and the reasoning behind it. It sounds kind of silly till you see what I'm fixing to show you and then it, I, I'm sure it'll make sense. I got this old whizzer motor here. Let's see if I can get it in the picture. There we go. I'm going to put it on my whizzer eventually. It's got it's a good motor mine's pretty much junk with a flat spot on the crank and it rattles but this one's real good and tight I paid dearly for it too in a sense I, I traded dearly for it um, let me set this fixture down I made me a phone fixture I get it kind of pointing at the table here if I can I'm going to find a piece of I save all my all of my scraps of uh, gasket paper because they ain't done till they're done. Ain't nothing too small to throw away because if you think about it, the bowl gasket on carburetors or the metering adjustment on a carburetor, pretty daggone small. So you need little thin uh, small pieces. I used to get my mom to save me cereal boxes when I was a kid to cut gaskets out of it. She let me borrow her little stitch ripping scissors, she called them, because she was a seamstress. But uh, uh, she told me, don't you mess them up. You you be careful, boy. And she knew that, that I knew what that meant. Hang on half a second. I'm going to get a piece of wood to lay down. That'll give me a good surface to cut on. Need a good surface to cut on with a razor knife. <clears throat> All right. First thing I'm going to do is put on my cheaters. Uh, probably ought to cut a circle. The whole crux of what this video is, if you don't want to watch it all, is you always want to hold your razor knife like a pencil and pull it towards you. If you're just trying to freehand one or you got your other hand in the way, you're going to screw up. Eventually it's going to find a knot in the wood and it's going to jump real quick or God knows what. But as long as you're holding it like a pencil, you can only pull your fingers in so far. I mean, the most agile person. I can't make this knife come back and cut my hand. There is no way I can do it. I, I'm, I'm pushing hard as I can. If you don't believe it, just try it with an ink pen. Take your ink pen. See if you can write on this part of your hand. You can't do it you, unless you just downright make yourself do it. In normal use, you're going to be doing whatever you're doing and not get near your hand. Plus, the fact that you're working your fingers, making them push in harder than what the tendons want it to, is actually in your favor. It's like you're governing your own movement. You're wanting to pull in real hard, but your tendons are keeping it from coming in real hard. So, it's beneficial to not try and just Hold a knife like you would and just slice in the open air. Plus, like welders do or painters or pinstripers, you got to prop your hand. You don't want to do it freehanded up like this or you'll screw it up. You got to have some rigidity to it. All right. On this little, this is the compression release valve spring cover. Uh, in order to make a gasket for it, see that lifts up under the exhaust valve and holds it open while you're pedaling. Till you get going real good, then you let off the compression release. The valve goes back to working normal, and off you go riding. Wow, and I just noticed this motor still got the limiter up in the intake port. That thing that looks like a wrist pin goes in the intake port and makes it smaller so you can't over rev it. That probably won't get used. But before I can do anything, I got to make a relief hole for that uh, thing that comes up under the for the compression release itself. I'm going to just guesstimate about a hole about that big. Can you see that on the... Yeah, you can see it. This ain't going to be perfect. It's my first video to do watching from the front side of the camera where I'm actually watching what I'm doing. Alright. I pull it a little toward me, turn it, a little toward me, turn it, little, 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 just small increments. If it turns out octagonal or pentagonal, no big deal. That's not going to hurt a damn thing. Because all this is going to get removed anyway. But little short bits pulling toward me. And I, 
I'm actually having to fight to do this, to pull this, because my tendons don't want my thumb to bend down no further. Don't want my finger to come down no further. Everything's all governing the fact that I don't want to stab this into my hand. All right, I cut out my little biscuit, and believe it or not, I'll save that because someday I'll use that on one of these carburetor ball things. And if you think I'm tight, you're right, and I'm proud of it. I am tight. I, I ain't buying no ball gasket, and I sure ain't chasing one down. It ain't the money. It's finding the damn thing. If I got this right here, I don't have to get out of my chair, and I can fix that if that were leaking. Somebody put a screen uh, on the carburetor, and it's really not a good idea. That's way more restrictive than one might think. It needs to be a big outer domed one where it can take air in all around it. That that much wire over that size hole is doing as much restriction probably as the intake restrictor. But I'm getting off of, off of the main thing. Now, we take our... I want to use as much paper as I can use and still get it done. Or as little paper as I can use and still get it done. All right, right there. That just gave me a spot to... Free that up so I can draw a good line around this with my ink pen. Ain't gonna be my best and ain't gonna be my worst. But, uh, and if I forget about it, when I get going a little here, if you're uh, needing to cut your holes and you don't have a leather puncher, you can use an old uh, spent, of course, an old spent 22 shell. You can take a cheap Taiwan or China socket and stick an extension in it so you'll have a good way to hold it and twirl it up against the edge of your grindstone till it sharpens it down, and they make the best little old hole punchers you've ever seen. Just tap them with a hammer, and it's a done deal. Now, I'm a southpaw, so scissors aren't made for me, or this particular pair ain't, but that doesn't matter. Southpaw people... Uh, are known to be creative because we've had to adjust to living in a right-handed world. That's not the only benefit to it that I can see. Writing in a binder was the biggest withdrawal. I felt really screwed that I'd either get ink all over my hand and had to write over top of that spiral winding, but there again, you learn to adapt and go on, which is why they say Southpaws are more creative. They've had to fit in but they're also supposedly nuttier so that I, i'll go along with that <laughs> all right that's probably like i said this ain't gonna be my best one because for one i'm doing it in the sake of time i don't want to bore you to death i say that all the time on my videos because i get bored watching certain ones it's old I'm gonna take a little more off of Around that corner just a smidge. All right, now I'm going to look back at my plate. It looks like a quarter inch, a little over a quarter inch. Let me lay this on and see. Yeah, that's going to that's going to tie in real well for that. But it doesn't need all that paper. All it's going to do is hold it all and make a gooey mess. So here's where you get to see the part about the dragging the thing towards you. And I'm going to intentionally go cross grain on the wood where ordinarily you pull with the grain. It don't screw you up as much. But I'm going to show if you were doing it out, out on the side of the road, which nobody's going to. But just for explanation's sake, I'm going to pull against the grain. And you come down to about what looks where you want to go. You come across, do a fake line just to give me a, just to give me a, a reference. This bottom one's a little thicker. That's all right. Uh, let's see, I was all the way up to that corner. It starts off easy, but by the time I get down here by my hand, it's getting harder to pull. I'm making work out of it intentionally because, like I said, I cannot 
if you said, I'll give you $5 to make that stick in your hand, I don't think you can do it. I ain't saying you can't end up with a trip to the hospital. It could happen. And this really ain't that critical. That's crooked. Let me go back and take a little more off just so it'll look a hair better. Come down to there. Down to there. And I can feel the grain of the wood messing with me. I'll hit it and it'll go over it, but I can't go too far. I've had gaskets cut all the way and get all the way to the end and then run it through. And I, gosh darn it, now i got to start all over. It was usually when I was younger and in a hurry. All right, there's the gasket. The inside ain't pretty, but the motor ain't pretty. The rest of my whizzer ain't pretty. And from the outside, it's going to look real good. There's the breather slots that let the crankcase pressure out, if any gets in there. But on this kind, it ain't like a Briggs & Stratton where it's got a little one-way dealy inside the valve cover. It's got the little dealy in a thing on the side of the engine and on this one, I'll show you here, on this one, they have put a cloth over it. Somebody's put a cloth over the crankcase breather. And that little disc is what the compression release comes up under. That disc on the exhaust valve, it's a little nicked up. I'll have to work on that side. Alright, let me set this back over here. All right, hang on half a second. I'm going to grab this old pair of hole punchers. These ain't harbor. Well, I'm lying. These are cheapies. I, the old ones are out in the shed. But I know what size screw that's got. So I'm going to use a, a hole that's just a little bit smaller than this screw. That way, it actually holds the screw in place while you're starting it. You can go ahead and stick the screw gasket and all in the plate before you fish it back in under there. I've got my reference dots, but something, I don't know if the video will pick it up. You don't just put this on here and pop it through. You set it on the gasket. You make a little pressure so it leaves the circle and you look at it and say, yep, I was dead over my mark. But if you weren't, I'm going to intentionally do the other one wrong. See, I done found my... I just found that little baby dent that I made in it. So that one's going to punch out good. But I'm going to do this one wrong on purpose. Say I got up here and I wanted to make my little dot. And, all right, I made my dot and it ain't near where I want it. So I haven't gone through, so it doesn't really matter. I've just barely made a little impression here off to the 8 o'clock position. If this were 12, it's off to the 8 o'clock position. I'm a little off center. So I got a second chance. I can go back up again, put another dimple. Now that dimple looks right. That one looks dead on the ink that I did with the ink pen. So I go back and get it to fall into that. Then I punch her through. And I always wiggle it a little bit to pop the... But those things aren't precise. They don't, they don't hit exactly where they're supposed to. But the cool thing about punching with the smaller one, you can go ahead and get your screw started. And I'll dress them screw heads up. Back when I was fooling with BSAs and Triumphs, they had those expensive British Standard Whitworth bolts. Dollar a bolt back in the 70s. Well, I wasn't going to pay that for side cover bolts. I had time on my hands and uh, didn't always want to go up and deal with my parents. So I'd stay in the basement, keep them from knowing I'd been out riding around uh, burning uh, illegal substances. I'd stay down in the basement and I would take all them screws, put them in the vise, sting them with the arc welder, and dress them down on the grinder. I, I'm bragging here, but I've got to where I can dress something down. And I use a grinder like a, a lathe or a milling machine. I don't hit my fingers. I ain't got no scars on my fingers from hitting them on the grindstone. I, I, I know my feel well enough to know I'm more than likely not going to hit them. I ain't going to say never. But I'd fill them full of weld, and I'd take two hacksaw blades and put them side by side in a hacksaw and cut the groove across them. Then I'd take a file and just barely round that edge. Then I'd take the wire wheel and uh, make it look like it had never been messed with, like it was a, a flat 
screwdriver screw since the day it was made. And bless his heart, our old shop teacher, Mr. Russell, he was damn good. He knew a lot of stuff, but I argued with him and about got myself whipped because you don't argue with a teacher in front of a class, but I did it anyway. He said, now, son, you ain't going to remove no metal with the wire wheel. I said, well, what about aluminum or lead? I said, I've cleaned up my battery posts on my car to make them, or my battery terminals to make them look like they weren't all chewed up from jumper cables and stuff. And I've removed a little too much accidentally. He didn't like it. You don't really make them look silly in front of the class, but I was a show off and a little obnoxious brat sometimes, and that was one of them. But if you don't remember nothing else about this, remember to pull toward the grain on the wood is best, and don't try to do it with your hand in the way. Teacher, when we were doing carvings one time with some little fancy tools that looked like a awl but had a trough gouged in them, we were doing relief wood cuttings in art class. The teacher told Sammy, he said, whatever you do, don't cut towards your hand. Well, first thing you know, old Sammy's got his hand here, and he's got that awl tool, and he's going away at it, and he ran that son of a, you know what, under his thumbnail, and it came out back here. <laughs> Gives me the creeps thinking about it to this day, but I acted quick. I grabbed his hand, and I probably should have left the damn thing in there for blood reasons, but it, the leverage of it was killing him. I pulled it out of his thumb. We wrapped it real tight, and they sent him on to the doctor, but uh, it was pumping out blood that was dark because it was coming out so quick it wasn't getting oxygenated as, you know, like, like a, a gradual bleed. He was squirting pretty good. But all them's, them's worth saving if you're on the tight. That scrap of good Carol Pack Felpro paper, that ain't garbage. Hell no. Old JD will use that over and over. All right, I've blithered on enough. Thanks for watching, folks. This is John Wade on YouTube. 22 motorized bikes, a boatload of old antique motors, uh, antique motors on the shelf all prettied up, and bikes out the wazoo, bikes with enormous motors, bikes with average size motors, and you name it. Thank you for watching. John Wade on YouTube. Bye-bye.